This video is on carbon-13 MMR. Carbon-13 is an isotope of carbon. The reason why it's specifically carbon-13 is because carbon-12 nucleus actually does not have nuclear magnetic spin because it has an even atomic mass and also an even atomic number. Nuclei which don't have this magnetic spin property cannot be used in MMR spectroscopy. Luckily, we have carbon-13 nucleus which is an isotope carbon that has this unique property, which is the nuclear magnetic spin, due to the fact that it has an odd atomic mass. Carbon-13 MMR analyzes the chemical environment of carbon nuclei in organic compound. It provides essential information on the connectivity of the compound, as well as information on the number of carbon atoms that are present in the compound. Let's first talk about the carbon-13 MMR spectrum which contains information that helps us determine the structure of organic compound. The x-axis of carbon-13 MMR spectrum is labelled with chemical shift, which is calculated by using the characteristic frequency of the radio wave that is resonant with each carbon-13 nucleus, depending on its chemical environment. The characteristic frequency is compared to that of a reference molecule, which we'll talk about in a moment, Specifically, in a mathematical formula where we find the difference between the frequency that's resonant to the sample that we're analyzing and the frequency of the reference molecule divided by the frequency of the reference molecule. This is how the chemical shift of each carbon 30 nucleus is calculated. The very first thing you need to understand is that in a carbon 30 MMR spectrum, the number of signals excluding the reference molecule, is equal to the number of carbon-13 chemical environments there are in the molecule. For example, a molecule of ethanol has two carbon atoms, and the two carbon atoms are also in separate chemical environments as they are connected to different atoms. Carbon-1 is directly connected to an oxygen atom, therefore, it is affected by its deshielding effect to a greater extent than carbon-2. This is why carbon-1 has a greater chemical shift compared to carbon-2, resulting in the presence of two separate signals in the spectrum. When analyzing an organic compound using carbon-13 MMR spectroscopy, we always need to analyze a reference molecule. This is usually TMS, which is tetramethylsilane. TMS is the most common reference molecule due to the following properties. It only has one carbon-13 chemical environment, as all the carbon atoms that I'm circling at the moment have exactly the same connectivity. In addition, the carbon-silicon bond is very stable and chemically unreactive, so it is very unlikely it will interfere with the organic compound that we're analyzing. And finally, the radio frequency that is resonant to the carbon-silicon bond is easily distinguishable from almost all organic molecules. Carbon-13 MMR spectroscopy is useful for determining the number of carbon atoms. In the spectrum, the number of carbon chemical environments equals to the minimum number of carbon atoms. For example, in this spectrum, we are given four different signals. This tells us this molecule contains four chemical environments for its carbon atoms. Since it has four chemical environments, we know that this organic molecule has at least four carbon atoms, as it is impossible to have four chemical environments if there are less than four carbon atoms. Let's look at the carbon-13 MMR spectrum of this molecule in more detail. This is a molecule of an ester, ethyl ethanoate. This ester molecule contains four carbon atoms, and again, each carbon atom is connected to surrounding atoms in a different way. Therefore, each carbon nucleus has its own chemical environments. This is clearly represented on the spectrum as four separate signals. The relative position or the chemical shift of each signal can be accounted for by looking at the chemical shift data that's in the NASA data sheet. Carbon-1 is positioned right next to a carbonyl carbon. And in the chemical shift data, this is given a range of 20 to 50. This is why C1 signal is on the far right-hand side of the spectrum. Carbon-4 is connected to another carbon atom, 
and this chemical shift is between 5 and 40 ppm. This is why carbon-4 and carbon-1 are very close together in terms of the chemical shift. Carbon-3 is not only connected to a carbon, but also has a single bond with the adjacent oxygen atom. This is found in a 50 to 90 ppm range for its chemical shift. And on the spectrum, you can see it over here. Lastly, carbon-2 is my carbonyl carbon in the ester molecule. In the data sheets, the carbonyl carbon has a much higher chemical shift between 160 and 185 ppm. This is why on the spectrum, carbon-2 is on the far left-hand side, very far away from the other signals. Carbon atoms can share the same chemical environment. In the molecule pentane, despite the fact that there are five carbon atoms in the molecule, there are only three chemical environments. This is because the middle carbon has its own chemical environment, while the two adjacent carbon atoms are in the same chemical environments. This is best understood by drawing a line down the middle of the compound to visualize the symmetry that is present in the molecule of pentane. If you look at the connectivity and the relative position of the two carbon atoms that the arrows are pointing to, you will see that they are exactly identical. Therefore, they are in the same chemical environment. By the same logic, the first and the fifth carbon atom are also affected by the symmetry and therefore are in the same chemical environment. In the carbon-13 MMR spectrum, pentane will produce three different signals, which suggest it has three chemical environments. Carbon-13 MMR is useful for distinguishing between isomers. A good example is between methyl butane and pentane. These two compounds have exactly the same molecular formula and functional group. Therefore, it is very difficult to use infrared spectroscopy and mass spectrometry to tell these two compounds apart. However, in carbon-13 MMR spectroscopy, pentane, like we saw before, produces three signals due to the fact that there are three chemical environments. In contrast, in methyl butane, there are four chemical environments as shown by my labels. This produces four signals. So therefore, by simply counting the number of signals that's present in the carbon-13 MMR spectrum, we can identify methyl butane from pentane. Furthermore, apart from the number of signals that's present, the actual position of the signal, that is a chemical shift, is also useful for identifying the functional group of the molecule. For example, the carbonyl carbon in a molecule of aldehyde has a very large chemical shift compared to the rest of the signals. The actual data for chemical shift can be found in a NESA data sheet. This concludes the video on carbon-13 MMR.